What is up, Wise Crack Nation? It's your boy Natty here, coming to you with his review of Elseworlds Part 2. But just to let you know, we're no longer in Central City. No, we come to Star City. And I'm letting you know right now, I'm a vigilante. And I want you to know, you have failed this city if you fail to watch this review. So let's get into it. Elseworlds Part 2 Arrow Edition Although we're coming to you from Star City, we're still seeing that Barry's in Oliver's body, as in during the open narration, it shows Barry's doing the Arrow intro monologue. So I guess Barry had to do double duty work this week when doing this crossover. And now we see that things are getting worse as the red skies and yellow lightning are growing more stronger. And now things are going from bad to worse for the Argus group that Diggle's in charge of. Because now they have to fight the new Slade Wilson. And although Diggle can hold his own, it shows that it's not enough when he fights Slade. But when... Barry, Oliver, and Kara show up. Diggle knows that something is going down and that it's going to be serious. And another thing to point out, just like with Team Flash, Team Arrow doesn't know that Barry and Oliver have switched bodies. At which point, Oliver calls Felicity for help to Argus in order to help them with facial recognition and searching down the good doctor. He has yet to tell her that her that him and Barry have switched bodies, which is never good because Oliver keeps too many secrets and doesn't tell Felicity everything that she needs to know when she needs to know it. Oh boy, this is going to cause more marital problems for Oliver. And that's something I do not like about being a Star City. And what's kind of surprising is, even though they're on their way to Gotham, Oliver still doesn't believe Batman is real. That is just a myth portrayed by the government. I mean, really? And now uh, what's really kind of funny that I find hilarious is that when they get to Gotham, Barry finds the bat signal, but Oliver still thinks it's fake and that the Batman isn't real. It's been only one night in Gotham City so far, and we see Barry, Oliver, and Kara walking through an alleyway in which they're confronted by a gang of thugs that want to rob them. Which is a bad move in the thugs part because they don't know who they're really messing with. But before anything pops off, the Gustin City Police Department shows up and recognizes Barry as Oliver Queen, in which case they arrest all three of them. But before Barry gives in, he looks like he's about to snap and go off on both the thugs and the police. Luckily, Oliver has the good sense to tell Barry to back down and be arrested in order to keep everybody safe. While back at Star City, Felicity and Curtis are currently trying to figure out why the red skies and yellow lightning are getting worse. At which point, Cisco and Caitlin show up and for some reason, they open their big mouth and reveal the felicity that Barry and Oliver had switched bodies. At which point, they didn't know, but Curtis and Diggle had to fill her in. Oh, I feel sorry for Oliver when he comes back to Star City. And now we have an even bigger issue to deal with. As all three of our heroes are in jail, they really need to be arguing over what they should have done right and what they did wrong. 
fortunately for them, a mysterious benefactor bails them out. Now, who would bail out three people in, from Gotham City Jail that don't even know that they're there? Things get more intense and interesting when we find out that the gang is dropped off in front of the Wayne building of all places to be introduced to Kate Kane and see that she's the one who's inside running Wayne Industries for the time being and is the one that bailed him out of jail. And for some reason, Caitlin and Cisco aren't really helping things back at Argus as Cisco opens his mouth and makes it seem like Iris was able to tell that Barry was Oliver right away to make Felicity feel even more worse for the fact that she couldn't see that Oliver was Barry when she saw him earlier. Now, what's kind of messed up for this crossover is that we're not going to get any sign of Batman because Bruce Wayne has been gone for almost three years now, which has really left Gotham in a struggle hole. But in hindsight, it doesn't look like it's doing that bad. And unfortunately, the help that they came to find at Gotham wasn't going to help because... Oliver, back in his heyday, slept with the person that they were supposed to get help from. But luckily, before leaving the GCPD, the Flash, a.k.a. Oliver, stole some very important information which should help them. Well, it seems that Barry, Oliver, and Kara have run into a dead end with trying to find Dr. John Deegan. But before Carr goes off until search the city, she has a little conversation with Kate, at which point Kate not only identifies herself as Bruce Wayne's cousin, but also to the fact that she knows who John Deegan is and that he's a doctor at now Arkham Asylum. And after hearing that name mentioned, she decides it's time for her to suit up as well. Well, it seems that both Team Flash and Team Arrow are trying to open up an interdimensional doorway in which the red sun and yellow lightning are causing, but it only works partial as it shows the other Barry or Jay, as Caitlin put it, telling them that in order to stop things, they need the book, yet they don't understand what he's talking about. And now what's become more interesting is that Cisco, Caitlin, and Diggle meet up with Cara, Barry, and Oliver outside of Arkham Asylum and tell him of what happened when Team Flash and Team Arrow met the other J through the portal, and that they need to get the book in order to set things straight. So instead of breaking in, they plan on doing things their way. One, by admitting Caitlin into Arkham Asylum and making it seem like she was a mental patient. And two, John and Barry, a.k.a. Oliver, uses Argus connections and goes into the hospital looking for the good doctor. And what makes things just as weird, and I mean weird, is that when Diggle and Oliver find John Deacon, he already knows that Barry is not Barry and Oliver is not Oliver, as they come to admit that he used the book to switch them. And before escaping the hospital, Dr. John Deegan releases all the patients from their cells by unlocking the doors. Now it's up to Barry, Oliver, Cara, John, and Caitlin to get every crazy lunatic of Arkham Asylum back into their cages. Although everything is going as planned in the beginning, 
At one point, Barry is attacked from behind by a mental institution patient and knocked unconscious, while Cisco is hit by a van. Luckily, before the van takes off, some more superhero help arrives in the form of Batwoman. And she is ready to kick some ass. One good thing that benefits from them splitting up around Arkham Asylum to take care of all the patients is that Kara finds John Deegan with the book in which she uses her super breath to blow him away and retrieve it. Unfortunately, the slippery little bastard got away. And now Caitlin is going one-on-one with the Arkham Asylum inmate who charges up Dr. Freeze's freeze gun and uses it against her, at which point Barry and Oliver go to help her, after which they're exposed to, I guess, some hallucinogenic gas that makes them see each other's foes. Barry sees Malcolm Merlin, and Oliver sees Reverse Flash Eobard Thawne. One of the most epic fight took places as Barry versus Oliver's hallucinations, but not only were they hallucinations of their arch enemies, they were hallucinations of each other as they fought one another and not knowing that the other is the other. Luckily, Batwoman came out of nowhere and snapped them out of it before any real damage was done. After everything is finished and well and good at Arkham, Batwoman still insists that they leave Gotham for the better because they're making too much noise for her just to sit back and not do anything. At which point, Kara reveals that she knows Batwoman is Kate, and Batwoman reveals that she knows that Kara is Supergirl. So they consider both themselves the world's finest and shake hands before before the Team Flash and Team Arrow leave Gotham. As both teams get back to Argus with the mystical book in tow, Barry and Oliver decide to have a private conversation about what they experienced at Gotham and the Arkham Asylum and what they had to go through when experiencing what they had to deal with with Eobard Don and Malcolm Merlin and realize how each other had it more difficult than the other realized. Which in the end, I think they gained a more respect for each other as to how they deal with their lives now. And now, just like in the Flash crossover part one and part two, Oliver and Felicity have a heartfelt conversation in which Oliver tells Felicity, no matter how much they change, no matter what happens, that he will always love Felicity and that she's the love of his life. Boo-hoo-hoo, stuffy romance. We all know what's going to happen. But the surprising factor that happens afterwards is that the Earth-90 Barry Allen shows up out of nowhere through a breach and explains to both Team Flash and Team Arrow of what's happening, what Elseworlds is, and who Marvu Nuru is, a.k.a. the Monitor. After which, Cisco alerts everyone that he's been sighted on the streets. And after seeing that he's on the streets, Barry, Oliver, Kara, and Earth-90, Barry Allen, decide to approach him and tell him that they're not going to let him do what he did to their other Earth and subject their Earth to that caliber of destruction. Unfortunately for Earth-90 Barry Allen, the moment he tried to use his speed, the Monitor erased him. So now the Monitor has informed them 
of another being that is coming and that's stronger than him. And now, not only must they deal with that, they had to deal with another alternate reality as the monitor reapproaches the good Dr. Deegan and gives him the book once again to rewrite history. One with Barry and Oliver having no powers and being wanted criminals. And now the worst thing possible has happened. Since the world has been rewritten and Barry and Oliver had no powers, they're now under the watchful eye of a superhero that they thought that they knew well, but now should come to fear the dark Superman. Oh boy, wise crack nation. This is going to be an epic, epic last episode as we come into the ending of this one for right now. All that I can say is be ready for a showdown. But for right now, I'm going to get ready for part three and coming back to you with a new review for tomorrow. As, as usual, be wise, crack hard. Like, comment, and subscribe for this video, and I'll see you beautiful people later.